Should I start? Start. 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 Okay. <laughs> um, basically, a little bit of history. I guess what I'm talking about is a browser development environment continuing on the thing that I presented at the roundtable in October, I think. Um, basically, a little bit of history. This started as a co-fest project between me and Hamad Safadi, who was our summer intern at Hopkins last summer. It continued as my pet project, mostly because I've been using it for my own ease of development. Uh, then around, I think, January, February, there was Goldstream and uh, the, the folks at PSU that were working on GPU support on Kubernetes. And she basically asked what the easiest way it is to change things in the Kubernetes runner and test things are. So I kind of formalized some of the commands that I was using from my notes into a few scripts and gave those to her to be able to create a Galaxy branch, change code in there, and then deploy it on Kubernetes without having to worry about linking anything. Um, and then basically this week, I took those scripts and then basically redid the chat ops from last fall. Um, to kind of have the more modern and extensible version of what I'm going to show today. And then basically what is it is deploying Galaxy on Kubernetes is the base of it. And then a, like few tricks to be able to apply modified code without building the image. And the goal would be to allow developers to test and share live instances with dev code and also opening the door for development in the browser. Um, so I'm going to start with a live demo of so I made this organization um, just to kind of mimic Galaxy project. Um, and then I opened the PR. The PR is changing in the Kubernetes runner, just adding a debug statement. Um, so I just wanted to test this, assuming this is a PR that I want to see. Say deploy. Um, so a few things from October is that the bot will respond. Oh, um, I hope it will. Okay. Um, so when it sees this and then when it deploys it, it will react to it. And then it will also yep, see. So that just the signal that it saw the command and that it deployed the workflow that is the deploy workflow. And then if you look in actions, you can see this the dispatch command that looks at the comment ended and it dispatched the actual workflow. Uh, one thing to note here is there's a list of commands that are accepted uh, and there's a scope for who's allowed to do them. Right now, the scope is that anyone with light access to this repository would be able to dispatch commands. We can This can be customized, so we can have different flavors of commands, one for committers, one for public people, for example, put a time limit of 10 minutes on public instances and leave it like for two hours or a day for developers or stuff like that. Um, but anyway, so after this is done, the uh, the actual deploy command is dispatched. And this is what actually deploys Kubernetes, I mean, deploys the Galaxy on Kubernetes. The first comment is when this workflow actually starts going. So the point of this versus this is mostly that there might be a queue so if there is a queue, there's other tests running, and this workflow has to wait after being dispatched. I didn't want this to be misleading and for the user to just be waiting there. So I added just a small comment when the actual preview workflow starts, just to know that in about a minute after this comment, or about a minute and a half after this comment, Galaxy will be up. Um, and that should happen soon. Um, Any questions so far while we're waiting for the thing? I guess I could go in the answer and actually show what's happening in Kubernetes as well. Um, I, I got a question. List of available commands. Uh, I will go through that afterwards. Yeah. Uh, I mean, is, is there a way to make this like a drop down or some way where it's like you don't have to go to a lookup table? Oh, I mean, I could add like a help function that would just print everything. Um, that would probably be the way to do it. I don't know, like a drop down. Um, but I mean, my hope is that if people actually start using it, that it will become kind of 
a habit. Um, and something about the deploy command is you can add arbitrary settings. So if I do um, Alex equal, I think I called it extra Alex equal set cdmfs dot enabled equals false so true or whatever like this will actually send that to the helm update command so you can customize things like that uh arbitrarily and then one thing that i want to add is you can do deploy oidc deploy cdmfs just the most common things so if you want to test oidc it will automatically create a client with key cloak and then it will make the whatever IDC can fix to be able to communicate with that. We could do the same for SAML and stuff like that, just to have testable things that are preset. Um, but yeah, I don't know how to make like a full-on dropdown. In well, dropdown is kind of difficult, I guess, given the GitHub and chat restrictions, but some some indication of what's available. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, so you can see here that after I deployed it, it basically prints what Galaxy Helm prints at the end uh, from the Helm install. And then one new thing that I add is that it also just sub logs. So one thing that was always common is that it's useful to have the logs, especially if there's a problem at startup or debugging something like that. So just an automatic thing, it will put all the logs from the handlers into gists. So you'll have job handler log. Or job handler log, web handler log, uh, if I could spell. It's a bit. And then workflow handler. And then also on top of all the handlers, I also grabbed the events. Oh, there we go. Uh, so that's just for the actual Kubernetes events to see if you want to see timing of how long it took to pull the image or anything like that. It's just the timing of when all the parts started, stopped, images were pulled, just all the events in Kubernetes. Um, so that's deploying. Uh, and then I guess, so assuming I want to test, so back to this PR, this PR was adding a debug statement in the Kubernetes runner. So I want to test that this actually works. I go into the galaxy that was just deployed. I upload whatever the data. Oop, oop. Start. I go and filter text manipulation, replace somewhere. Execute. So I have the two jobs that I ran here. It's already made to uh, the Kubernetes zone, but again, it can be. Any configs can be changed, so one can change the job conf to run somewhere else uh, if you want to test the local run or anything else. But anyway, I ran the two jobs. So now I want to see as quickly as possible whether that worked. I do tail logs job, so that will tail the logs of the job handler. Um, so the two commands that I added this week from what was there in October was tail logs and just logs. Tail logs tells the last like 100 lines basically of what you can say tell logs all or just logs all and it will do all of them or you could do job web events workflow to get the specific one tail logs will apply with a comment of that tail just logs will apply with a link to the gist um yeah so here i can just this um There we go. Yep. Um, there we go. So it's applied with the job handler log, and you can see the debugging testing that I printed in this PR. Um, yeah, and that's about it. I mean, if, if I want to get more things, I can do just logs job to get the whole thing. Um, I can do um if you want to change code you can so i can for example just come here be like okay i want to print um oop. instead of just printing here i want to print it i don't know three times 
like update, commit the changes, and then I just go back to here. I say deploy again, and it will update the code to be the new code. Um, so then that's how you can iterate. I'm just changing things. Kubernetes on the, on the job, you see your logs, and then you do everything in GitHub, basically, uh, taking Kubernetes for granted, not having to worry about setting up all of that, and then also just having live Galaxy instances. Um, Look, this is a reply to the just log from here. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. And then the final command is tear down, which is just to kill it. Um, yeah, any questions? Yes, I have a few questions. Hmm. Uh, the Kubernetes cluster that this gets deployed to, is it configurable? I mean, it is. Uh, so. I guess like let's say I have a local Kubernetes cluster. Can I deploy it to that? I mean, in theory, yes. So I mean, as long as GitHub can communicate with it, yes. So the way all the configurations that are needed to set this up in any repository are repo access token is just the token for the account that should reply to the comments. Cube config is whatever cube config pointing to a Kubernetes cluster. And then this is just the, the domain that you want the thing to be at. But beyond, like, as long as you have a valid cube config, it can point to any cluster. Okay. Um, what it's currently being used is a Jetstream cluster that is running Cloudman, which allows it to auto scale. So the, the I guess the potential plan would be to leave a tiny head node always up. So it doesn't cost that much. It's like a tiny node. And then when people start using it, it will auto scale. So if there's 10 people using it, it will scale up three nodes for that time. And then it will scale them down when people are gone. So at least for the common usage, we can probably have a Jetstream cluster that's always running for everyone to share. But then also if you want to do your own like you know, heavy duty development, you can also just boot up your own cluster and then just like for like Galaxy, put a separate cube config in your repository and then just make a PR to yourself. And then you can run this on your own cluster as well. Also, if you don't want to deal with chat ops, but want the same functionality directly on the command line. So if you want to keep coding in VS Code or whatever you're coding, but then be able to deploy on Kubernetes, there's also so the reason why for extracting all of these is to be able to do that. One second, I'm on the line. Oh. Oh. Um, yeah, so all of the scripts for Helm update, symlink branches, the symlink Galaxy into this, uh, set up branches to just set up Galaxy and Galaxy Helm from scratch, update links to update the symlinks between the Galaxy repository and the because Galaxy Helm needs the files in its own directory. So what it does is some links Galaxy repository to Galaxy Helm to be able to deploy the new code. So all of this is automated so that you know with three bash scripts just running the command update links, just branch namespace, it will set up the values file, will set up everything for you to be able to do this, same as some chat ops, but from the command line. And obviously I need to document and clean these up, but um, yeah. Right. So, so the plan oh. is also be able to do it from the command line. If, so the GitHub thing is a convenience thing, but the actual underlying part of being able to develop on Kubernetes that is not related to just GitHub, that's just basically a layer on top, but the scripts themselves can be used without the command line. Okay, yeah. and which, uh, how, how do you tie this to a branch of Galaxy that you're doing development with? So let's yeah. say I created a fork, I'm working on a bug fix, and I want that to be deployed. So this you'd get clone Galaxy Helm as well, because you need that too. And I haven't done the calculation of linking only one. But basically, you just do bash sim link my branch path to your Galaxy directory, and it will automatically set up. So this repository, it's not very smart. It expects links to be on the branches directory, and it expects a certain structure. So that's why this sim link command is supposed to just create that structure without just by sim linking things. Um, so you can just clone this repository, run sim link, pointing to wherever you had your galaxy, 
and then you run update links helm update and you can deploy your current branch of local dev code onto kubernetes okay and finally i'll be quick is there a readme so i can repeat this on my own uh no but i should make one and i do have <laughs> the commands that i'm running myself like for examples but yeah th there will be one by gcc okay thank you yeah um okay oh uh, anything else is going back to this, it deployed, and it, you can see it says has been upgraded, not installed because it already was existing. Um, so just if I want to check that the new code is there, I can lead on a job and just check that it's been three times and then can move on. Um, oop. 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 Go. And then just tell logs job again and then it will have to three times i'm not going to wait i'll come back to it in a sec but yes yeah, so that's basically it um one small comment is that so what i did to make this work one problem is that right now whenever you push something there's already all the tests that are running and they clog up the queue the because the responding to this is itself a workflow it's it only it runs in like 15 seconds but it will wait in the queue if everything else is running. So I actually took all the tests except linting and put them on the slash test um, so that the tests are not running automatically on every commit. It's saying slash test to run them. This might not be desirable. I just did this to not clog up the queue here. It's a little bit less of a problem when it's on Galaxy project just because we're not really making PRs from branches. It's always forks. So this can be run on the Galaxy repository on that queue. And then all the tests would be running on the user's <laughs> fork, whatever space, action space, right? Because that it's on push. Um, so we can disable testing on PRs and only have testing on push. And then that would make it so that the push is done on their repository. And then we keep the queue on Galaxy project for this. And then also have the option to rerun them on our side with this. For, uh, that's an example of how to do it. it does, the point is just that the queue does need to not be clogged up. Because if you're waiting for like 10 minutes for this to even be led, then it's less attractive or less desirable. Or harder to use um yeah that was the comment and yeah here it the testing three times so that it updated code and then when i land a new job you can see the new code um yep that's kind of it here any other comments before i move on i mean i think from the perspective of like a pull request reviewer uh, I think it's fine to wait like um maybe it's been a day since the last commit and I want to try out the code in the PR, um, it doesn't seem to be a huge problem. I mean, if we can fix it, like you're saying, then that's great. But I, I don't know that that needs to be like a blocking issue to get this to uh, onto, you know, onto the main, the main branch, because I think there's a lot of value just even with the wait time. Um, yeah. And so that was going to be my, like, that was going to be my Uh, how do we get this onto Galaxy Project Galaxy? So you cut off a little bit. Was the question how to get this on Galaxy Project Galaxy? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, basically, all we have to do is one, and I, I'm assuming it's okay, but just get an actual okay that we can set up a cluster on Jetstream that will always be running and just decide how many nodes it can have. Um, other than that, it's just setting up those secrets in Galaxy Repository and then um i mean yeah i can squash these commits but there's like 11 commits that are all in github workflows oh so it's just adding three workflow files one script and then the secrets that's that's it to get it working on galaxy project i think i mean one thing is it would only work for committers at the beginning because right now it's made so that you need right access to the repository um so i and I would feel decently comfortable enabling it like soon-ish 
for committers, for actually a public facing things where anyone would be able to do it, I would give it a little more time just to make some like cleaner presets and stuff like that and pair down and stuff. Um, but yeah, I it, it should be fairly easy. It should be just one PR to get it onto Galaxy Project Galaxy, or we can set up a cluster that's always running. I can also, honestly, I could, and I guess I have this in a slide, but um, I can also make a separate repository for deploying the cluster itself, like with chat ops. That way, if somebody just wants to make their own cluster, instead of having to get a VM and do Ansible playbook themselves, it would just ask the chat for it, um, for the, like what Kaivan asked about setting up your own cluster type thing. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm babbling, but yeah, it is possible. So you mentioned needing permission to get a standing cluster on Jetstream. Um, is that Ennis? Ennis, do we have permission to do that? Um, yeah, all I, right, I, awesome. Um, yeah, so I actually, Keith brought up the TAC IU divide like this week. Um, so there's like the IU.jetstream and TAC.jetstream and our allocation at TAC.jetstream has been pretty empty. I was thinking we could just allocate like 200 gigs of data and then like just a few nodes on there before we start using it all up. Um, and it can just stay there as a standing cluster. Um, yeah, and I can do that like by GC or like by the end of the week if you we want to. Um, but yeah. In terms of teardown, does the cluster clean it? If if someone forgets to do that teardown command, does it just keep running forever? Or uh, currently, yes. However, I can add timers to tear it down after you know an hour after the last commit or something, and I can add like. When you close the issue, it turns it down automatic, or the PR will turn it down automatically. Right now, it does just keep it on. Um, it is, I mean, the cluster is itself always running anyway. So if it's just one or two galaxies that are always that are stayed up, for example, overnight, those won't actually make the cluster auto scale. It will just run on the head node. Uh, so in terms of cost, something like small like that won't affect it. It would start being a problem if it's like you know, twenty. 30 of them that stay up for a long time, then that would start accruing node cost, but or I guess credits anyway, but yeah. But yeah, so we can add some timed thing, um, or like we can add something that's like, you know, every day at 4 a.m. or something clean. I guess it's hard for time zones to have a time when nobody's doing stuff, but anyway, yeah, we can add time to clean up. So something it's not there yet. And it is in the slides about it needing to be added. Okay, I mean that that comment you made about closing it when the PR closes and that makes a lot of sense, right? Presumably, yeah, and that's fairly easy. That's just changing the on instead of just preview dispatch, just on close issue. So that's yeah, that's a super easy change to make it tear down on closed PR. Uh, so that that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So what? are the tools that Galaxy has when it's deployed on this Kubernetes cluster? Is it like similar to main or is it a bare bones Galaxy? Oh, yeah, we can, so I can do presets. Oh, uh, I'm just gonna jump ahead a little bit here. Uh, I can do presets here to do, you know, deploys. Right now, this deploy CTMFS would theoretically, or the default one that you're seeing right now, it's deploying the cloud CTMFS repository, not the main one. So it's okay. the one with the tools that are tested on Kubernetes and the default one for Galaxy Helm. Um, however, we can just switch out the repository. So, and you know, we were using main up until like a month or so ago. So I could just add slash deploy main and it will deploy the CVM, the tools CVMFS for main. Uh, another thing is by default right now, everybody's, I mean, this gets deployed with a single user admin um that might be a problem and also like in general this doesn't have authentication i could theoretically especially if it's just for committers we can all just have github identities on the cluster and i can actually link this with key cloak so that galaxy would only be available for people with specific credentials um but for now yeah uh you're also an admin so in theory if you want to test like a specific thing you can also just install the tool and test it um but yeah 
Yeah, if it can be deployed with main tools, that would be excellent. Would yep, be I can I can add that as a preset and I can just put it here so that I don't oh, so I don't forget. Um is it a security? So is everyone who logs into the Galaxy instance an admin? Oh, uh, right now, yeah. Well, you don't even have to log in at single users, so it will be logged in for everyone as an admin. Are we okay with that? I mean, that is equivalent to being root, right? Um, but it's probably not a problem. Yeah, I mean, I can... I guess there's that bug in OIDC login, which OIDC login doesn't work right now. Um, but I can fix that and then I can just, before we make it public, I can just add to require a login and for it to be through Keycloak and Keycloak to have a sign in with GitHub. And then I can make a list of all the committed emails and add accounts or something. And yeah, we can make it so that you have to be logged in and not the only people who can log in are the people who should have access. Um, and that shouldn't be hard to do. You can do it by GCC probably. I mean, maybe it's not a problem, right? I mean, you would have sort of the capabilities that the Galaxy user in the system has, but maybe they can't really do anything interesting anyway. Yeah, I, I don't know how big of a problem it is. I mean, if they take <laughs> over the whole cluster, it's also a Jetstream cluster that's running on a pretty empty allocation. It's a dev allocation. So I don't think like, there's potential for like huge leaks or huge problems. But I do think like if somebody really wants to, they can use this to exploit, like to get free infrastructure basically. But I don't know if that's a concern or like if we wanna just try it first and see if it is a problem and deal with it later. I mean, it's not hard to add like a small layer of protection at least, but so we can do that. I mean, I guess it doesn't, as long as we're okay with the, I mean, I guess the thing I would care about is the credentials that we're using to deploy it, but it sounds like it's a small dev thing. So maybe it's not worth worrying about. Yeah, and there are no credentials to Jetstream or anything like that. It's just the cube config. So if that leaks in any way, we can just delete the cluster altogether, deploy a new cluster, and that will be invalidated. Um, so it should be fairly easy to reset that if it gets compromised. Um, yeah. Cool. Oh, uh, anything else? Yeah. If you do, I mean, yeah, I, I think it's fine to deploy as it is. I, if you do decide to like require login, maybe just require login for the admin user. Right. Um, so yeah, I could make a special preset password for the admin user that we just pass around between committers with whatever developers in galaxy and yeah, all users would have access to it. But then if you want to be admin, you have to log in as a special user in Galaxy. That's, that works too. That is a simpler solution. Yep. Is, but, is the, um, is if the, I'm submitting a, a pull request, couldn't I just modify the Galaxy YAML to add an admin user as my self and get in as an admin user that way? Yeah, technically you can. <laughs> but only, only committers can launch the cluster, right? So, yep. Yeah, so if you do the deploy command with, you can just use extra args to, I think this is called extra args now, um, to set anything. So here you can just set single user, admin user, but like John said, only committers will be able to dispatch these commands. So, yeah. Um, but I'm gonna go back to this slide for a sec. Um, just like as potential targets for this, um, so I, these are kind of like just the general groups that I thought about newcomers and like, especially for paper cuts and stuff like that, when there's a one line change, a typo type thing, that kind of thing um, for people to be able to just go into GitHub, edit file, make whatever change they want, test it, and then just be like, this has been manually tested and whatever, and someone can come to view it instead of them having to do a local setup. The PR reviewers to one, to not be, have to, fork and whatever, um, uh, check out every branch to test locally, but also to be able to share with each other. So you like tried something, you're like, oh, or like even the producing bugs, if you can open a empty PR with a, just a comment change just to show a bug and then can make the bug happen and have the logs for it and then just share it with the developer in the PR itself and then whatever person is going to fix it, can just go in there, make the changes, try them, 
give the instance back to the person who created the issue or whatever, and then ask them, does this look fixed and whatever, like being able to share that instead of it being a harder back and forth. For UI developers, especially, I thought that being able to share like a UI piece before it's done might be helpful, especially where it's the, sometimes a lot of design decisions that a developer might not actually care about, but giving it to test done with someone who actually uses Galaxy is helpful. So that's one specific thing. Um, for the Kubernetes projects, it's like basically if somebody wants to make a change in the Kubernetes under now, it's a decently hard setup unless you know all the entire stack. This would allow for people to be able to make changes and especially as we're talking about pulse like Kubernetes and all of that to be able to get people to not have to worry about the infrastructure, take Kubernetes for granted and just be able to target that and work in Galaxy code targeting that. For Jetstream, that's an excuse for us to use our allocation more um, and the dev allocation to not be used by just a few of us, but shared more broadly. Uh, and then for the just the Kubernetes team that we'll get a lot of guinea pigs and it uses Galaxy Helm. So it's also like an intrinsic test of Kubernetes and Galaxy Helm and the stack. So that's just a plus for having more testing for us. Um, but yeah, that's, I just want to go through that briefly. Uh, so I, okay. Um, going through these quickly, there's the extra args where you can put arbitrary things to the Helm install command. Um, we already kind of talked about just users in public. Any other, I added main as what Kaivan said for uh, main tools, any other presets that immediately come to mind as would be useful. And just for the record, this is just setting special values to be able to be set with one word. So it's, it's super easy to add. So just wish away. <laughs> um, and it doesn't have to be now, just message me if you think of a useful preset. Um, yeah. Um, just logs, tail logs. I want to find a better name because logs list has GSG, tail logs has two L's, and I don't like either of those. Uh, I'm thinking of just log peak log, maybe. But anyway, um, yeah, all events, web, job, workflow can choose to log specific things, uh, stuff that are easy. I can add uh, to be able to say the number of lines. Right now it's hard coded to 100. Uh, does, I mean, because it's a comment, I don't want to like, leave it open-ended necessarily. Uh, so I'm thinking like 200, maybe max. Um, and if not, you have to just it, but I can also add a grep, uh, which might also be helpful to, I guess I will add a grep before the tail, but yeah. Um, to be able to grep specific parts and have it in a comment instead of justing it and then grepping or searching in the gist. Um, would grep be useful? I answered myself because it was useful for me when I was doing something. Um, any strong objections to using BusyBox grep? I know GNU grep has a lot more things and the Perl regexes are popular, but uh, BusyBox grep is there by default. And yeah, I I was just gonna use BusyBox grep instead of GNU grep unless someone tells me not to. Um, tear down, there's currently no options. It's just, you say tear down and delete it. Um, if there's any options that people would think of, I'm thinking like, you can say tear down in 30 seconds or whatever, tear down in an hour or something like that, just to yourself set a timer or something so you don't forget or whatever. Um, and then yeah, automatic tear down on PR close, that would be fairly easy. Um, and then time tear down since last comment, and then maybe introducing something like keep to reset the timer. Uh, that is possible. It's a little bit harder just to figure out how to like how often to check, it probably has to be a clone job and stuff like that, but it shouldn't be too hard. It should be possible. Um, some more immediate things, um, client rebuilding requires yarn at least, and maybe a few other things. Um, the minimal image deletes those things. So I was thinking we should, there's two ways to do it. Either take the minimal image as a base and then extend it by just adding a few things like pseudo yarn, a few useful things especially for client three building, but also for development in general, or the first stage of the minimal image has all those things. I actually don't know if there's a way to just extract that outright, but there might be a way and we could just take the layer before everything is removed. Um, and then it should have everything that then in the Ansible playbook. Um, so that's just, it should be fairly easy. I just have to get to it uh, and that will enable rebuilding the client on the fly. 
Um, another thing which is actually not here, I want to add deploy full or deploy rebuild that will actually build the image entirely and deploy the new image. Um, it can be so the modifying code slaps the changed code on top. This would be actually building the image for the final test or something like that. Um, yeah, I've been using scripts and just command line mostly doing these things manually. I'm going to try to start using chat ops myself as well, just to get give it more testing. Um, I know Luke, we talked yesterday about you also using it for developing some things. And if anyone else is at all interested in starting to use this earlier, um, I can either give you access to that organization that I already made, or I can help you set it up on your forks or whatever. Um, if anybody wants to use this before it's live, uh, just tell me and I can set it up for you. Um, oh yeah, and the scripts already work on the Galaxy Helm level as well. So this on the Galaxy side, it takes Galaxy Helm for granted and would look for changes in Galaxy Helm. On the Galaxy Helm side, it would take Galaxy for granted and deploy changes in Galaxy Helm. So that way you can paste, te test both live. So it already works. I just have to add the command dispatches and stuff to um, the Galaxy Helm depository as well. Um, there's the passable adjacent project. So um, theoretically, everything that's done here could be done not just for dev instances, but also for something like workshop instances. So instead of PR, if we wanted to have a few people to have the right to open an issue, for example, and in the issue comment deploy with whatever endpoint they want, and for it to just deploy an instance of Galaxy on Kubernetes with whatever requirements they want for that. And then, so basically a way to ask for a transient instance of Galaxy that is quote unquote production ready um, from an issue or something like that, the bot will apply with whatever the link is and whatever. And then when you're done, you can tell it down from there. Um, if this is of interest, it should be fairly easy because it's it's a, it's easier than learning with modified code. It's just doing the same thing, but with um, the standard things or you no, know, just with a release branch. So it's yeah. If if this would be helpful, I can set this up and like fairly easily as an adjacent thing, um, and they can use the same scripts and stuff so that it's not an extra maintenance. It's just maintaining them together. Oh. Uh, and then, yeah, if we wanted to, and I mean, it sounds like we want to um, try to get this merged before GCC hackathon and try to like advertise it at the hackathon for, especially for newcomers, maybe, or I don't know. I don't know if maybe it's too ambitious to get it public by GCC because it's a month away, but I don't know. But just I think the tutorials and everything are already written about, you know, the, the whole dev stuff. And they're just using PDB and local stuff. So, okay. But yeah. Oh, that was it. I'm done. Oop. Any questions, comments, anything else? Sorry, I went over time. Uh, no, nothing um, for me. That's. Fantastic work. Um, thanks so much. And thanks for presenting. Uh, Marius, do you want to talk about Gitpod? Sure. Um, so I, uh, I jumped the wagon when, when Alex announced that uh, he would talk about this because I think it's, uh, um, it's an alternative approach. I mean, like a complementary uh, approach. So Gitpod, as the name suggests, they're probably running some Kubernetes in the background, but it's a service that is ready and that we've enabled on uh, the main repo. Um, and we have a Gitpod config file um, in the repo itself that sets up how an image is built. And then every branch and every pull request gets a pre-built image. Um, and from there, you can launch uh, VS Code. So I'm going to show that real quick. Uh, let's see. Get into the desktop. All right, so you can see what I'm seeing, I hope, currently in GitHub. Yeah, 
Yeah, so uh, I guess you may have seen, if you've looked at the PRs before, um, you may have seen uh, this thing here. Uh, so that's on, on every PR. And um, if you go to Gitpod itself, they have this little extension where you can add a Gitpod button to your um, GitHub user interface. Um, so then if you click on there, you need to log in with something. Um, so I'm going to go with uh, GitHub. And what that is doing is it's creating a workspace. Um, and it's going to pull a container image that is configured in, uh, in here. So with this .gitpod.yaml file. Uh, I mean, that's a bunch of things that prepares uh, for development Galaxy environment. Um, so we have some VS Code templates that are ready to go. Um, they are stored as settings gitpod.json and not as settings.json. So if you've used VS Code before, you know you can put project specific settings in these files, but um, we don't want to clutter yours. So we're not going to check them in under that path. Um, but so basically, this runs when the container is up. Uh, then we need to install PG 2 some development requirements, create the database, build the client. And all this happens when the container is built. So that's not happening when you run it. That happens you know, when you create the PR and then the image is being built. Um, we expose the uh, port 8000 by default. Um, and that's it. Um, all right, cool. So then here, this, this has started. It's up. Uh, you can see it's currently still fetching packages for the client build. But we can already start uh, with this. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So now I've started it from, um, from a branch that I had been working on and then um, had forgotten about. But I see there are some failing tests. So I thought I could show how you can um, use that to, to debug your tests. So the failing tests, they were uh, both failing in the legacy and the new API tests. So I'm pretty sure that's uh, due to the code and not some random fluke. So we can go to the test results at the bottom and see which test is actually failing here. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Um, there we are. Uh, so yeah, I mean, let's pick one of those. So this is, uh, I mean, it's a VS Code browser environment, so it works just like your local VS Code. Um, so you can search for uh, the test, and okay, here's the test, and uh, you can go to the test tab. And I was supposed to pre-populate this. I guess it didn't quite work. Yeah, so that, I mean, when it's starting, it's not quite done. So uh, there we are. So once that is done, you actually have everything set up to run tests uh, and to run a uh, dev galaxy instance. Um, but it's the development requirement that are not pre-installed with a build. So that takes like, I don't know, a minute or two. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's pretty cool for reviewing PRs because I mean, you can also, uh, I mean, just use it as your regular environment. So, you know, if you want to see some um, context around this, or you want to look up methods and you don't want to scroll through GitHub, um, then that's pretty easy. So the point of this PR is to enable uh, changing metadata for jobs that failed um, and where you already have jobs queued up. And all that is failed is the metadata. Um, so if that happens, you're kind of stuck because we don't want to uh, allow the change, but it's safe to do it in this actual situation. So um, yeah, I mean, this is kind of more comfortable uh, looking, through, uh, looking through code that way than through the GitHub interface, or so I think. But uh, yeah, I mean, the real power comes when the setup is finally done.
and you debug in VS Code? I mean, that's what they're saying. Um, so there's the, uh, you know, the dot uh, VS Code folder. Um, these are the two template files. So one for launch configuration right. um, and one for the project settings. So here we set up all the testing modules. Um, and uh, here we have the actual launch configurations. So they populate um, both what, what's available here. Uh, so you can run the jest tests, you can run uh, tool tests uh, within Galaxy. And then uh, this is the launch configuration. So you run actually Galaxy in the debugger and you can stop it at breakpoints. Okay. And then for tests, um, once it's finally done. I think, uh, so we're currently discovering tests. So you can go to, uh, yeah, Python test log. So previously it was saying that all these things were not available because it wasn't installed. But uh, now this thing is rolling, so it means it's discovering tests. All right, cool. So here are our tests. Um, and also, so we already found the test we wanted to debug. To go back. is too small. Uh, there we go. All right. So we wanted to debug this one. So we can go back in here, find the test. Uh, so that's in Galaxy Test API test tool uploads. So that's API test tools upload. Tools upload, and then that's test upload and test validate. Test upload and validate. I mean, they were both failing, but um, if we click on uh, the little debug icon there, it starts the PyTest session. Um, and since that's all running through VS Code itself, uh, within the debugger, you can, um, you can find the code that we've been changing. So this one here. And put a breakpoint in there. So breakpoints, I mean, like with most IDs, you just set the breakpoint here and then it will stop and you can change things and inspect things. Um, it also, you know, I mean, the test uh, framework opens ports. Um, I mean, Galaxy starts up, uh, test server, and then these ports, you can open them and you can actually see them in the browser. So let's do that. Um, you get here the, the URL, it takes a moment. And especially if you're in the um, breakpoint and want to continue because I mean, this kind of blocks Galaxy, but um, yeah, I mean, that's that's where we are. So now uh, the breakpoint um, has been hit um, and uh, okay to edit metadata should be false because that file is used. Oh, right, this is... Uh, more context for the uh, for the bug, but I mean that's kind of how you can um, debug individual tests. Uh, you can also start uh, an entire configuration. So here, I mean, you have the choice between the tool test framework and uh, debugging uh, just unit tests and tool testing. What doesn't work is Selenium because you need a local browser. Um, or some uh, X11 VNC magic. Um, but uh, I mean, yeah, that's kind of how you can do it. So now um, it's starting out. All right, and it found the port 8000 is active. So again, we can open that. And that takes a um, few more seconds. All right, there we are. 
And uh, yeah, you have your Galaxy instance available. And uh, I mean, this is like really bare bones. This is exactly the same as uh, if you clone Galaxy and did run SH. So nothing is set up. Um, I mean, this is also really cool if you're working on multiple branches uh, with, especially if you know they have different requirements and dependencies. So you can just switch your browser tab and go somewhere else and uh, work on that other instance uh, without having to install all the dependencies, rebuild the client and so on. Um, yeah, I mean, this is uh, running in the debugger. So you can also, uh, I don't know, as usual, you can, uh, intercept uh, calls. So, uh, actually, let's, let's create a job and intercept that one. Is that how we create jobs? Yeah. All right. So um, we can run a tool. So I mean, oh, it, it also comes preloaded with the test tools that um, let you fail certain things. You know, I mean, their um, job environment uh, tools, test job properties, where you can uh, have tools that just fail certain things. Um, so if you set this one here, the job will fail. But the point is just I wanted to hit the breakpoint here. Right, so um, that's sort of the um, request that came in, tool ID, job properties, tool version, and so on. So yeah, I mean, if something fails, if you have a traceback, try to find where this is. You can go in there and then um, play around with things. So uh, I could, you know, um, from the debug console, you can also change things. So in the payload, I mean, this is a Python interpreter, so you can change things. And uh, you could, for instance, change the tool ID to upload one or whatever you want, I mean, just as an example, and then uh, continue. And so, I mean, that's really super great for quickly iterating on what you're developing. Um, yeah, I hope you've, uh, you've seen how that's useful. I think, uh, I think we can stop here, but um, yeah, I mean, it's not my exclusive development environment, but uh, for quickly reviewing PRs, this is really great. Can you show real quick what um, like saving a file and making a commit looks like? Or can you do that for that environment? Um, you can. Um, but um, there was the, well, let's see. Show that back. Uh, let's do some nonsense like this, which makes no sense. Um, and then you have the, I mean, I, I don't really use the interface. So, well, I mean, you have the changes here. Uh, I guess that's how you add. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> It's fine. I, just, I, uh, I, I have created branches and stuff uh, from here. Um, Does it somehow have your GitHub credentials? It doesn't, right? Like if you commit, it doesn't it. have them by default. So when you start creating things uh, and you want to push stuff, uh, it asks if it wants to get your credentials. Uh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, even within VS Code, I just use the git command line, so I'm not really sure how the interface works. All right. Stupid question. Yeah, are there are limitations, stuff that you would like to do, but you cannot. Ah, uh, yeah. So I'm using the Vim key bindings, and you cannot change the key bindings uh, in the browser extension. Um, Selenium, as I said, um, because uh, you need to control the browser and that's not possible. I mean, you can run the Selenium test headless, but I like to see um, what's going on. Um, otherwise, I don't think I've seen much that you can't do. Um, what's also a little bit annoying is that after an hour, it goes away. 
So if you uh, run a poetry update with our dependencies, which is, I thought I was being smart and you just run it in the cloud, which should be faster than my local thing. It is, but it still takes more than an hour. So then, um, unless you like come back to the tab and refresh, um, okay, so it just goes if, away. If you're using it, it still keeps. Uh, yeah, it keeps the changes. Alive. Yeah, it keeps the changes. Also, if you haven't committed it, it keeps the workspace. Um, but the workspace starts back up. So your currently running processes will be terminated, but your changes will be there. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I can only recommend it. Also, the uh, config there is a good kickstart for your local VS code. Um, I mean, I have in my local VS code a bit more things that I should add back, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's how you can get started with debugging, launching tests in there. Um, also writing tests is really cool, right? So if you write an API test, but you don't exactly remember how the responses look like, um, you just put the breakpoint there and uh, you can use interactive console to write your test. And when you're done and it works, you just copy what you did back into the code and you know that the test is going to work. It looks like it's one. Awesome, amazing stuff. Thanks for showing it off. I'll stop the recording. <laughs>